I'm just going to take very brief points from, from the floor, and then I'm just going to give just a, a minute each to our speakers to, to, to sum up. I know it's very short, but, but uh, I had quite a bit of uh, response time there. So uh, um, there were a couple of people who have already spoken. Actually, stay in front of the space, so we take a, um, keep, keep it brief, and then I'll go to you, and we'll go, go to the I, go I move our way back. Sorry. I wonder whether this debate could be seen as a debate on the source of creativity needed to provide the benefits both speakers have been talking about. There's one approach which is to look at the limits and work out what to do with anything he's been talking about. But I was particularly interested in what Daniel said. I don't believe in natural limits. I was particularly interested in it's not on the physical level of physical <coughs> limits, but on the level of the creativity that thinking in this way allows. I'm a designer, and I know that the best ideas arrive when I don't impose limits on my thinking, and that really way out ideas, like a Ferrari for everyone, are often necessary steps in the process of innovation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just there it is. Just there it is. Just to Daniel, when, when I think of unfettered economic growth, the one model that we've got, well, apart from China's America, and think of Dick Cheney and Bush, New Orleans, that collision of race, class, and global warming. And that, that, that horrifies me. Um, anyway, that, that was a, hopefully a question as well as a point. I do have one minute. Okay, and okay. um, yeah. So this is a short question to Daniel. Daniel, many scientists in the world believe that um, our carbon emissions are a problem. Around, at the moment, we're around about 390 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. What's your limit for that growth? Okay, and then right at the back. To our growth or the limits uh, of our imagination. I think you can both both speakers can probably agree on that in some somewhere in there, and that's um, for our society. Thanks very much. Okay. Okay. Well, in one minute. Um, <laughs> uh, firstly, I'm still enjoying the sense of being the new orthodoxy. You know. <laughs> After 35 years, I'm feeling really quite good about that. But uh, there we go. But I want to come back to the last two points. Interesting that both the first and the last speaker <coughs> there touched on creativity and there being no limits to human imagination to come up with better ways of addressing these problems, meeting people's aspirations in more intelligent, empathetic <coughs> ways. And I think that's absolutely right. Your example is fascinating. But your mind works well when you remove all limits to what your design brief looks like. And that's good. Let me put an alternative, an additional point, which is to suggest to you that one of the best ways of understanding sustainability is to think about the sonnet. And to think about the beauty, since you both brought us into this area of creativity and beauty. And to think about what poets over hundreds of years have been able to do with the fixed form of a sonnet, with a limited number of lines, which you cannot vary, and a limited number of syllables in each line, which you can vary, but not very much. And if you think about the discipline of the sonnet, and you think about the astonishing works of inspiring beauty that have been worked within that strictly limited sphere, the concept of limits need not scare those who put their faith in human imagination. It need not scare us, because it may actually open up even more intelligent, creative ways of doing what we want to do to make life better for more people than we've done up until now. Thank you, Jonathan. Daniel. Okay, I, I can't possibly answer all the questions in a minute. I'm happy to talk to people individually afterwards. Uh, maybe just to focus in my conclusion on this <coughs> idea of limits and try and bring a bit more precision to it, because there's one conception of limits, which I think is Jonathan's, which is really that these natural limits are fixed, that there are natural limits to human activity that we can't overcome them. If we do try to overcome them, we bring disaster. Whereas the way I see it is much more that we have challenges, but we can overcome those challenges. 
uh, we, have, we certainly have problems, but we can overcome those problems. And the main barrier at the moment to overcoming those problems is precisely that kind of cultural aversion to prosperity uh, and to growth, which is so powerful, which is represented by Jonathan Porritt, and whether he likes it or not, is the mainstream view. You know, there are different emphases within that, but it is ultimately the mainstream view. And I would say that for, to really to realize, realize our full humanity, uh, we do need to abolish scarcity. We do need to have the attitude to limits. We need to uh, overcome limits. And we shouldn't be aiming for sustainability. Sustainability means sustaining poverty. It means, means sustaining disease. It means sustaining the kind of society that we have with all its flaws. What we should be aiming for is transformation, transforming this society into a much better society where we've abolished scarcity, then we can realise our true humanity. And that really is what Ferrari's for all is about. Up a limit on CO2 in the atmosphere? <laughs> can I just get a, 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 a factual answer? Up a limit on CO2 in the atmosphere? Well, Jonathan, if you listen to what I said, I, I no, said... give me a number, not a... No, there is no... A, there's no number. This is not, this is not the Jonathan Porridge show. If you want me to answer, let me answer. <laughs> what, what I argue very clearly in my introduction is that we can overcome the problem of climate change through technology and engineering. I'm, I don't claim to be a climate scientist. I do not have a number, but I'm confident in the capacity of humanity to overcome the problem of climate change. I do not believe in rationing and behavior modification, which despite what Jonathan says about investing in solar energy, that is the mainstream, that's the emphasis, that's where they're going. Okay, enjoyable as this is, I'm gonna to have to draw the proceedings to a close. So uh, I would, uh, I'd like to uh, thank our two speakers, first of all, for, for a great day.